there's some folks out there defending the 1% and taking on this class war of, no, I am the 99, no, I am the 1% and proud of it. And one of them is the former Libertarian vice presidential nominee, currently chairman of the Libertarian National Congressional Committee, author of Conscience of a Libertarian, Empowering the Citizen Revolution with Guns, with God, Guns, Gold, and Tax Cuts, Wayne Root. And his website, of course, root for for America. Dot com. Wayne, welcome back to the program. Hey, Tom. Always an honor to be on with you. So I am looking at uh, two tables here from the federal government. I, got, I have the, uh, the Fed uh, tables on wealth, average wealth by wealth class from 1962 to 2009, in thousands of two, adjusted for two, thousands of 2009 dollars. And I'm looking at the IRS uh, tables for income over the last 25 years. Uh, from the IRS Bureau of Statistics and Income Division, July 2011. And it says, these, these two things tell me that to be in the top 1% with regard to income, you have to make, uh, in 2000, 2008, you would have had to make $380,354 a year. This, in 2009, it would have been $343,000. That was that was a bit of a, a bump because of the recession. Three hundred forty-three thousand nine hundred twenty-eight dollars a year. Twenty-eight thousand six hundred and seventy dollars a month, and to be in the top one percent according to the Fed, you would have to have wealth equal to or in excess of thirteen million nine hundred and seventy-six thousand dollars. So that would be assets including like your house and other things. But you know, if you owe any money on your house, you can't count that in. So you have assets of, of uh, roughly fourteen million dollars and greater, and you have an income of three hundred eighty thousand dollars and greater, or three hundred three hundred forty three thousand dollars and greater. Right, and, and in two thousand nine, it was three forty. My guess is because of the recession or depression, as I call it, because <clears throat> I think this is the Great Depression too. I would say that by two thousand ten, that probably went down to around three hundred, and by two thousand eleven, you could very well be in the top one percent with an income between two fifty and three hundred thousand a year. My income has always been certainly in the gross income between five hundred and somewhere in that range, four hundred and six hundred a year, somewhere in that range. Assets, no, not that high, although. Ten years ago, I was getting there, but of course, I got knocked right down along with everybody else. Well, but to be in the top five percent, to be at the top, at the bottom of the top five percent in terms of wealth, you'd have to have two two millions uh, two million seven hundred forty three thousand dollars of net wealth. Mm -hmm. That would put you at the bottom of the top five percent. Uh, to be at the bottom of the top ten percent, you'd have to have nine hundred and four thousand dollars worth of wealth. And to be at the bottom of the top 20%, you'd have to have $664,000 in wealth. And, and I think my argument, Tom, is that we shouldn't be worrying about anybody's income. We shouldn't be jealous. We shouldn't be envious. We should all be thrilled there are people that make money and create jobs. And we should all want to be just like them. My dad was a butcher. I'm a son of a butcher. And my dad would see a Rolls Royce drive by, and he never said, do they deserve their money? How did they earn their money? We should tax them. Do they need that car? No. He said, son, someday that's going to be you. And Guess what? Today it is me. I own Aston Martin, a two hundred fifty thousand dollar car. I live in a beautiful mansion. I started with nothing. My dad was a butcher. I didn't inherit anything. I earned it myself. I took great financial risk, and I worked sixteen hour days. And I should be celebrated. I should all the other millions of small business owners who make good money two fifty, five hundred, six hundred thousand a year, and are doing only good things for society, not bad things. Well, you know, for people who are making a couple hundred thousand dollars a year, I'm inclined to agree with you, Wayne. Uh, my concern is not so much the top 1%, it's the top one-tenth of 1% 1 that gets 50% of all the capital gains income in the United States, which is taxed at a maximum of 15%. I'm guessing you're paying more than 15% income tax? Uh, yes. Well, again, the averages show that people who make a million a year and more pay only about 22%, uh, I'd say, or so. People who make uh, a much less pay much less. The average person in this country, Tom, it doesn't matter if the top rate's 35%. By the time you take your home deduction, your charitable deductions, your business deductions, the earned income tax credit, the deductions for having kids, the reality is most rich people pay about 15 to 20%. Most poor people pay zero in income tax or maybe up to Five percent, and the people, people in the middle, the people at the high end of the middle, making a hundred to three or four hundred thousand, they're the ones who are paying the twenty-five, thirty percent. Well, they're the ones I'm defending. See, it's yeah, that's okay. the number. You so, and I are kind of saying the same thing. We're actually yeah. in agreement here. But right. if you're going to go after people who are "quote unquote" rich, go after Warren Buffett and Donald Trump and uh, Bill Gates. But right, go because after the average two fifty to five hundred. Yeah, I'm not disagreeing. After I, Warren Buffett, I'm not disagreeing with you, Rain, right. Wayne. I would say, in fact, the and 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 I'll say for the record.
record, I'm not part of the one percent by either criteria. But the 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 the, the bottom line here is that the the top one percent or the top one tenth of a percent earning all of the income in the United or half of all the income in the United States that is taxed at a maximum rate of fifteen percent is probably the reason why the Fortune five hundred. Uh, wealthy, or the excuse me, the Fortune 400 wealthiest individuals have an average tax rate of 17 percent. It has nothing to do with deductions because at that level, those deductions are pretty meaningless. Well, there, there's some. It has to do with the fact that people pay taxes. Warren Buffett always says he pays less than his secretary. He pays 17 percent. Warren Buffett chooses to take everything in capital gains. Right. You know, you know what's funny about Buffett? Here's the here's the criticism where I'm going to sound like a liberal. Here's a guy that's worth billions of dollars, one of the two or three richest men in the world, and he actually takes a salary of a hundred thousand a year, and all the rest is capital gains. Right. Well, we all know that FICA, Social Security taxes, are aimed at up to 106000 a year. Right. This cheap SLB, and I don't mean son of a butcher, actually tries to cheat us out of the FICA taxes on $6,000 a year. He right. doesn't even take $106,000 salary. He takes a So will you join he with me, Wayne? Him, he ought to take so, so join, will you, Wayne, will you join with me in saying that, uh, that, that income that is earned by money, as opposed you know, you know those people who earn their money, who earn their income by investing, uh, smart or dumb, however it may be, some people lose their money investing. Those people who earn their money by investing should be paying the same tax rate as those people who earn their, their living uh, as an entrepreneur, as you've done through the, through the intelligence of your mind, or as you know, the, the, the plumber that you hire to fix your mansion, you know, the, who work by the sweat of their brow. Well, unfortunately, I, say I don't agree with you because I've earned a lot of money on capital gains. In other words, let's say I make 500000 this year, Tom, and let's say at the end of the year I'm lucky enough to have 50 of it left, which is kind of a rare year. <laughs> when you pay a mortgage and you pay for your kids to go to college, and my daughter's at Harvard, there's no money left at the end of the year. I don't care what you make. Call rich people working rich. Most Wayne, my, my heart is money. bleeding for you. You. But let's just say there's 50000 left at the end of the year, and I choose, instead of putting it in my mattress, to invest it in stocks or to open another business or buy a home as a rental property. I'm doing good for the world, and I'm creating jobs. Of course, it's already been taxed. I don't think I should be paying the top rate on the money I invest. That should be a 15% capital gains. So Personally, you think like for, for that, for that one-tenth of 1% one of Americans who earn 50% of all the capital gains in America, and you're aspiring to that, although you're in the 1%, not, not the one-tenth. God bless them. I hope they create lots of jobs. You, I hope they leave their kids a great life. You think it's fine that. That, that those people have an opportunity to earn a living by, by way of a means that is only taxed at a maximum of 15%, but plumbers can never earn their living by a means that is only taxed at 15%, or I, I teachers, or janitors, or money. cops. One, you're paid a paycheck, and the rich guy has to pay the same tax as the plumber on that. Two, you take what's left over that's already been taxed, and you invest it. Two completely so, different So things. rich people who have money to invest should be able to make money with those investments at a lower tax rate. That's, that's what well, you're saying. Here's the thing. You're, you're looking at the rich, and you're getting mad envious, and I'm looking at the poor. I'm not envious. I'm I think it's unfair. But I'm saying, Tom, if the poor... I think this is a matter of, 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 of... Very simply, Wayne, I think this is a matter of fairness. I, I think that's unfair. I think it's a matter of loyalty to our country. I, I think it's disloyal to say that I'm going to pay a different rate than everybody else has to pay. I think it's a matter of sanctity. I think that 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 that, that the, the 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 notion that w I you know I don't want to be a rich man in a poor country, and I'm surprised well, that you would want to be. The only that seems that seems the, the the opposite of 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 this, the sacredness of the middle class. Tom, I'm just trying to lift people up. Let me tell you something. I came from that lower middle class. Not even How do you class, lift people up by paying a 15 percent tax rate on the on the work? that you do. Tom, my dad thought that, that making it in America meant getting a new Oldsmobile every four years. And Your I dad was looking at a 36% tax rate. Obviously, there's a big difference. How did I rise up? Low capital gains and low taxes are what allowed me to save money. If the poor ever want to be rich, you got to have low taxes on everyone. I want to lower everyone's taxes, not just rich people. Well, that's everyone. a nice change of topics, but, it, it, well, okay, we're out of time. We'll, we'll leave it at that. Wayne Root, RootForAmerica.com, the website. Wayne, thanks for dropping thanks by. Thanks for inviting me on, Tom. I You're really welcome. appreciate it. Good talking.